up guys? Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and in today's video I've got something just a little bit different for you. I'm going to be building the anti-RGB gaming PC build in a system that some of you will call classy and some of you will think is straight boring. So let's see exactly how it ends up. I'm going to run you through all of the component choices for today's build and of course anything RGB is not going to be included before putting the system together from start right through to finish and then booting it up to see how good it looks or maybe not and then just how good it performs. So let's do this. The Lenovo Legion 5 is an RTX powered gaming laptop that packs plenty of punch for playing the biggest titles out there. This model comes equipped with an RTX 3070 graphics card, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 165 hz display and Ryzen 7 processor. Awesome gaming performance in your favorite titles makes the Legion 5 the perfect notebook for gaming in 2021 and beyond. Check it out now at ebuy.com using the first links down in the description below. And a big shout out to both Lenovo and eBuyer for helping to make today's GeekerWatt video possible with the Legion 5. As always, we're going to kick things off by installing as many components into the motherboard as possible. For the motherboard, I've gone for NZXT's new N7 B550. It's a matte black motherboard that's really sleek, really simple, and is crammed with all the features we could want. Four RAM DIMM slots, plenty of room for graphics cards, and a built-in IO shield uh, with Wi-Fi as well ticks all of the right boxes. I'm going to be coupling it with AMD's Ryzen 5 5600X processor, a great six core 12 thread chip. that's a chunk more expensive than the Intel options on the market, but a lot better. The 5600X for me is really the best all-round gaming CPU right now, if you don't need the extra cores for video editing that you'll find in a Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 9. Memory for this build is provided by 16GB of Adata's XPG Gamix D20, one of the only non-RGB RAM kits we actually had in the office. It's a really great kit though, and really good value as well. If you wanted something a little bit more standout, something like Corsair's Vengeance Pro uh, LPX uh, is a great option, but for this build, XPG are going to cover us off nicely. The final component then to install into the motherboard is the SSD. This is WD's Black SN850 drive. It's a super fast Gen 4 NVMe SSD, with speeds in the region of seven giga bytes per second. That is mental. If you want to save a little bit of money, a Gen 3 drive is also a great option. But for this build, the Gen 4 jobby is going to do nicely. And with that wrapped up, we can go ahead and move the motherboard assembly into the case choice for today's build, which really was the impetus, the inspiration for this whole video. I'm just using big words now. This is Antec's P10 Flux. And this is part of their high airflow range. So you get plenty of fans included as standard and a sleek design. But it's the more kind of professional looking case in the Flux lineup. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like out of the box and make sure it matches with the key rule for today's build. It can't have any RGB. It does have though a nice sleek front panel uh, with a little Antec Performance logo and a door which swings out as well. So you've got some sound deadening foam in here like you'd find on Fractal's R series of cases with plenty of airflow. So if you want to keep temperatures and noise to a minimum, you really have got the best of both worlds. Let's go ahead and remove the side panels, get the NZXT motherboard screwed into place, and then our build is gonna really start coming together. Awesome stuff. That brings us nicely onto the next component today, the cooler. And I know what you're thinking, James, this is a nice cooler, but it's got RGB. That's not allowed. Well, buying a CPU cooler without any RGB is very difficult. But in our build, we don't actually need to use the included RGB fans, as the case has got five non-RGB ones included as standard, and they're pretty good case fans as well. The water block has a separate cable for the RGB and the power for the pump, so we can just not plug the RGB one in. It also matches the matte black aesthetic we're after. I didn't want to get a glossy black CPU cooler or a white one even that didn't have RGB, as that kind of defeats the point of a stealth build. So let's go ahead and get the cooler installed with the radiator on the front, utilizing those included front fans, and then by popping the CPU water block on top of our Ryzen processor, a little something like this. Spot on. So the radiator is now installed behind uh, these two included fans and the quite hefty front panel actually with that door assembly 
can just clip on nice and easily back into place. And that brings us nicely on to the final two components actually of today's build guide. The first of those is the graphics card and then we're gonna round things off with the power supply. So hang on in there. For the GPU, I've gone for the Asus TUF RTX 3080. The Asus TUF lineup is probably one of the best lines out there to get a matte black non-RGB graphics card. There is a tiny little RGB strip above the Tough Gaming logo, but out of all the latest GPU releases, it's about as all blacked out as you can possibly get. Compare this card to the Strix card, for example, which is crammed to the hilters with RGB, and this is a much better option. The Tough card as well, if you're able to get your hands on one, which I know is not very easy at the moment, is actually one of the better value GPU models on the market right now. It's a lot cheaper than something like a Strix, a Gaming X Trio, or an MSI Supreme, but still packs plenty of performance. The 3080 is one of my favorite cards ever, and regardless of new releases popping up here and there from Nvidia, it's still a great option in 2021, if of course you're able to buy one. Recent news from Ethereum that should disincentivize cryptocurrency mining in the coming months, alongside news about Nvidia's low hash rate series of cards should help gamers and hopefully bring us into a slightly better spot in the next few months when it comes to GPU demand and availability. Let's go ahead and get the Strix card installed in the build though and make sure it fits with of course our front mounted radiator. Oh, there was plenty of room. I don't even know what I was worrying about. There we go, slot the GPU in, and we're just gonna secure it down with a couple of screws to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Once we've done that, we're able to move over to the power supply choice for today's build. The final component, but arguably one of the most important. This is what's gonna provide juice and power to the whole system and take the energy from your wall and convert it into all the cables and standards you need for each of your PC's components. Once again, this is an all black unit with black stealthy cables and this anti-RGB build really is gonna look quite Batman-esque, I think. This is Corner Master's MWE 750 Gold V2. Basically, it's a 750 watt power supply with a super efficient 80 plus gold certification. A fully modular interface means you only plug in the cables you need, which is always a bonus. And the fact that it's semi fanless means it's super silent under low loads and low operation. I would absolutely recommend you go 750 watts for a 3080 build. 650 is just not going to be enough. When the 3080 really ramps up and power surges, a 650 watt unit just won't cut it. Trust me, I've learned that lesson the hard way. Let's go ahead and get the power supply in, do all of our cable management, and then I think we're ready to boot the system up to see not only uh, how it performs in the biggest titles out there, but first, just how good it looks. I was gonna say with all that RGB on, but there isn't any. There is of course only one way though to find out, and that's in typical Geekawatt montage style. Roll that montage. <laughs> stuff. Now we've seen just how good this system looks when it's all powered up, as ever, we're going to take a dive into performance and see how the TUF 3080 non-TI really stacks up. On your screen now is a summary, a snapshot view of all the different games we tested out with frame rate figures. We will dive into some more detail into some of these in just a moment's time, but this gives you a general gist of how powerful the machine is. The first of the focus titles we tend to look at though in these videos is GTA 5. At 4K high settings, we got 169 FPS on average, tested in the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode. 90 and 99th percentile results were also strong, implying some pretty stable frame rates. And these were tested as ever with Nvidia FrameView and MSI Afterburners Revertuner. Next up today then is a little bit of Watch Dogs Legion. And at 4K high settings with RTX on, we got a pretty impressive 78 frames a second, with 74 and 72 for the 90 and 90 99th percentile results. Call of Duty's Black Ops Cold War was strong at 4K high settings, giving us 118 frames per second, while Apex Legends, which is the next game on the list today, gave us 141 FPS at 4K high settings. 
This increases to 228 FPS on average if you drop the resolution down to 1440p. The next game though is one you don't need to drop the resolution down as the 4K frame rates are just that high. It is of course Valorant and at 4K high settings we got 307 frames per second. I mean, what's not to love? Talking of what's not to love, Cyberpunk. Now, of course, Cyberpunk is probably one of the toughest gaming benchmark tests in 2021. It's just so hard to run, but with the power of DLSS and a little bit of resolution scaling down to 1440p, we got an impressive 108 frames per second on average. These numbers will just about half if you enable ray tracing, and although it looks fantastic, if frame rate's what you're after, then ray tracing is not the route to go. The penultimate game we tested out was a bit of Fortnite, and at 1080p low, or competitive settings with everything tuned down to low and the render distance set to far we got 171 frames a second on average with 148 and 130 for the 90 and the 99th percentile results but what about a little bit of call of duty's warzone the latest dlss 2.0 update well i'm happy to report some fantastic numbers at 4k high settings we got 127 frames a second while the 90 and 99th percentile results were in the region of 115 and 101 all around it looked fantastic it performed super duper well as you would expect from an rtx 3080 and on that note that pretty much wraps it up for this video if you did enjoy it get subscribed give it a big old like rating thank you for watching and as always we'll see you in the next one